Hello, everyone. My name is Brian TG, Vice Provost of International Graduate and Extended Education at Cal Poly. We're excited to have you joining our webinar about the Quarter Plus program. We're going to give everyone a few minutes to join. So we'll be waiting for a few minutes. And in the meantime, enjoy our slideshow that tells you uh, some information and shows the great experience that Quarter Plus is. Great to have you here. Hello, everyone. This is Brian TG, Vice Provost of International Graduate and Extended Education at Cal Poly. We're excited to have you join our open house seminar, a webinar about the Quarter Plus program. We're going to wait a few more minutes to accommodate uh, folks who are still joining us and getting logged in. So just enjoy the, uh, the screen show and uh, we'll get started with our programming in just a few minutes. Thank you. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Brian TG, Vice Provost of International Graduate and Extended Education at Cal Poly. Really excited to have all of you join us. I know there might be still a few more people joining us, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started. We have an exciting program for you. Uh, I do want to let you know as we get started that we will have a, there's a Q&A, a question and answer box for you uh, that you should be able to see down at the bottom of your screen. And uh, we will be attending to those questions uh, when possible. We'll try to answer those live. Uh, in some cases, we'll uh, follow up with you later on those. And we'll also incorporate some of your questions into our frequently asked questions section on the Quarter Plus uh, website, which is at quarterplus.calpoly.edu. So again, my name is Brian TG, Vice Provost of International Graduate and Extended Education. What we're going to do in the next few minutes, spending time together, again, leaving time at the end for any questions you might have about the program, we're going to give you an overview of the program and also allow you to meet some of the key people who are involved in it, including the program coordinator, the, uh, the faculty lead on the program, and most importantly, our learning assistants and students who have been in the program from the past. So we hope that you can learn a lot more about the Quarter Plus program and share in our excitement about it. Let me start with uh, sharing with you what we want to achieve on behalf of students in offering the Quarter Plus program. We started offering it as a pilot program in 2014, and it's been growing ever since. We started with only 51 students, and last year we broke over the 230 mark, and this year uh, we'll have to see. This is an unpredictable year, but we're uh, really excited about what the opportunities are. Uh, what you'll see here is a screenshot of uh, some of the big advantages we see of, of a student being able to experience the Quarter Plus program before they start in the fall term. There's a lot of mentoring and encouragement they get from learning assistants and the professors. We have professional staff, experienced faculty, and that is a great opportunity for students to really uh, get the support they need to have a great start to their college experience. Related to that is the enhanced academic preparation and skills. Uh, obviously, Cal Poly attracts some of the very best students from across the state and the country, but the transition to the university level coursework does take some adaptation and the program provides some great academic preparation and skills for that. Not only in the classroom, but also with the learning assistants giving guidance to the students. The other element is you're accelerating your progress to degree by earning eight units of academic credit even before fall quarter starts. So that's a great opportunity for you to get yourself not only on track, but maybe even ahead of schedule. A huge element that we see as a key for student success is a sense of belonging and connection, social connection. 
And the Quarter Plus program is purposely designed to help students connect with one another and also get to know the professors and the campus community as a whole. There's also a certain amount of physical and psychological preparation that's needed to adapt to the fast pace of Cal Poly. Cal Poly is a quarter campus, 10 week quarters. If you're accustomed to a 15 or 16 week semester schedule, 10 weeks can feel fast. And so what we do in quarter plus is we make you go even faster than that by having you take two courses or eight units in only four weeks. So by the time you get to the quarter system in the fall, you feel ready for that pace and that sets you up for success in the fall. Another element related to that is just the confidence and preparation that you'll feel in terms of being ready for what the fall quarter will have to throw at you. And related to that is the familiarity you'll gain with Cal Poly's campus and the campus life. Next slide. So let's start with talking about the historical uh, experience of the residential program. This is, this is the program, as I noted, it started in 2014 with only 51 students. This year, we're setting the cap at about 250 participants to make sure that everyone has a great experience. We have a lot of small group activities and study sessions led by learning assistants planned. The dates are set for August 13th to September 11th. And all of this information, by the way, you don't have to write any of it down. It's all on the website at quarterplus.calpoly.edu. And the program cost, which includes not only the program fees, but also the housing and dining is $4,601.30. Now, we do have to talk about the practical realities of what our 2020 experience is. And so we do need to talk about the what if. And it, uh, we feel like it's our responsibility to plan for the possible scenario, and I cannot tell you with certainty as of today whether this is gonna happen or not, whether we will have to transition to a virtual version of quarter plus. So the message we really wanna make sure we come across with is we're gonna offer quarter plus, and it's either going to be the residential experience if everything gets a green light for that, or we are gonna make the transition to a virtual format uh, if the conditions require that. The good news is, is that the price would go down because uh, room and board would, not, would no longer be part of the cost. So the, the fee would be $2,500 for that program. Anyone who's already applied to the Quarter Plus program, you'd be given the option then of choosing whether you do wanna stay in and apply then for the virtual version. Same general time frame. we may have to change things by a day or two depending on, uh, on scheduling. Same courses, eight units of class, uh, would not require a new application. Still have a lot of the great features of the Quarter Plus program. Obviously, there's certain things we cannot replicate in a virtual environment, but there's a lot that we can still accomplish on behalf of student success and on behalf of those goals that I noted. So there's a lot we've been able to do virtually. We've learned this through our uh, open house experience and also through spring quarter. Campus tours, uh, different opportunities to experience what it's gonna be like here on campus, acclimate yourself to campus, and the learning assistants are just getting started with their creative ideas about this. So I know that a lot of you will have questions about this, this relatively new news about a virtual option, but as you suspect, the news story for us changes by the day, and so we're just making preparations for this if this becomes a necessity. So what I'd like to do now is transition to Eileen Aiken, who's the program coordinator for the Quarter Plus program. She will be the face of the program, the primary point of contact for both parents and the students. And we'll coordinate everything and make sure that the students have a great experience, whether it be the residential or the virtual program. So I'm gonna turn it over now to Eileen, and thanks again for joining us for this webinar. And once again, remember that there's a Q&A button down at the bottom of your screen, and if you do have questions, uh, you can post those there, and we'll do our best to address those. Thank you. Thanks so much, Brian. Welcome, everyone. It's so great to have all of you at our very first Quarter Plus Virtual Open House. I'm so happy you can join us to learn more about our very unique and special program here at Cal Poly. Uh, as the Quarter Plus Program co Coordinator, as Brian said, I'm your main point of contact for all things Quarter Plus. So 
I'm here to help you answer your questions and guide you through the process of becoming a quarter plus student. I'll be here with you every step of the way to shepherd you through the program and make sure you have the best possible student experience that you can have. We're really excited about the program this year. As Brian said, whether we're here on campus or online, we've got the same great courses, faculty, activities, and an amazing group of learning assistants to mentor and guide you through the program. At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ryan Alanis. He's a quarter plus professor as well as our learning assistant coordinator. And he'll talk a little bit about his role and introduce our five outstanding lead learning assistants. So take it away, Ryan. Thank you. And I have to apologize. First of all, if you hear a rooster, I'm at home and I, we have chickens and roosters. So I apologize for that. But thank you, Eileen. Uh, my name is Dr. Ryan Alanis and I'm an associate professor at uh, sociology here at Cal Poly. I've been with Cal Poly for the last 10 years and with Quarter Plus for the last four years. So I'm pretty familiar with it. My, my job will be to help coordinate the learning assistants to support them and also to support faculty through the program. As a quarter plus faculty member, I recognize that classes by definition are different. It's five weeks instead of 10 weeks, as Brian mentioned. So the class line, it's, it's very intense. The class time uh, sitting together with students is longer. So three hours instead of a, an hour and 50 minutes. What that does is it gives us more opportunity for learn by doing activities. So if this is a physical um, class where we are on campus, I really enjoy bringing my students to downtown San Luis Obispo to take a tour of the mission and have one of our, the premier historians of California talk a little bit about the colonial period in history and how the Spanish and, and Native Americans, the Chumash, uh, worked together and didn't work together sometimes. Uh, I like to send my students out looking downtown for different uh, aspects of how media and advertising teach us about race and reinforce ideas about race and gender and social class. Uh, so there's a lot of real uh, opportunities available for learn by doing that isn't necessarily the case in the regular summer course or the uh, regular quarter system. Um, it's also a neat experience for faculty because we're able to build uh, stronger relationships with students due to the smaller class sizes and kind of the more intensive format of the program. Uh, students get more direct attention from us because instead of take, teaching three classes and maybe 90 to 180 students, I'm teaching only 30 to 35 students. And that's, that's nice to get to know students individually and then be able to support them. Additionally, having the learning assistants and staff that are focused on the program and on the students really enables students to make that really significant transition, the, the resettlement uh, and, and new experience into this place called Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo. But as Brian mentioned, we're in this liminal space right now. Quarter plus is two. Is it going to be in the physical or the virtual? So faculty and the learning assistants are really trying to address this and prepare for both. So all of us professors in particular are investigating in innovative ways to increase participation, encourage relationship between the students, and build community so that students feel when they arrive on campus someday uh, that they do have a set, a set of friends, a set of, uh, uh, of peers that they can draw upon for support to be more resilient in the face of, of difficult challenges. Uh, some examples of this, of this building community is more collaborative work, online space for students to work on different projects, uh, maybe breaking into small groups or having one-on-one -on -one discussions, and taking uh, advantage of the new technologies that are enabling us to have different types of, of learning and teaching. In fact, maybe it's even pushing us a little bit as faculty to think differently about learning and teaching. How can we take advantage of this moment not just as a challenge, but as an opportunity to rethink education writ large. And so for me personally, I'm thinking about, although I do have the education and the knowledge, what do I bring to the table? What do students bring to the table? And I see students really bringing a technological advance than more, much more so than I do while I bring the knowledge. So how can we work together to potentially co-create knowledge instead of me just providing knowledge and students being more passive receivers of that. 
Uh, so I'm really excited about thinking more of a participatory education and quarter plus gives me a little bit of space to play around with that because it's much more as, as a, a much smaller and more intensive environment. In sum, I think as professors, we're all trying to do our best to navigate this new world like everyone else. But academically, I really see this as an opportunity and quarter plus in particular becomes a, a place for us to to maybe even experiment a little bit with our students and, and try to find out how best can we do this. And I'm really excited most in, in particular because the, the quarter plus system has the learning assistants. Uh, they have built in mentors for students coming out of high school to learn how to be, what are the norms? What are the, the ways of, of living, uh, the ways of being present in the community of Cal Poly that can help them walk and learn that very quickly and easily without being overwhelmed by classes and by other experiences and sports and clubs and all the things that come with fall quarter. So I just want to introduce one of our LAs, uh, Katie Hollister, who's been with the program, and she's going to share a little bit about her experience and about what the Quarter Plus system or Quarter Plus program means to her. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Alanis. Um, as you said, hi, um, I'm Katie. Uh, I'm one of the lead assist, uh, learning assistants this year at Quarter Plus, as well as the lead activities coordinator. I'm super pumped to be with you guys this year. Um, I, and, but most importantly, yes, I am a former Quarter Plus student. And I wanted to share a little bit about uh, my experience with the program and, um, and how great the experience really was. Um, so yeah, two years ago, um, August 2018, I rolled up to Quarter Plus, not really sure um, what the next weeks um, kind of held for me, but man, I'm so glad I, um, I attended the program. Um, I chose to go because Quarter Plus offered me the opportunity to get ahead on college courses and college, um, call it, make real progress towards my degree. Um, I'm studying English and graphic communication at Cal Poly, so um, I was really excited to just get ahead and uh, get started with my GE classes, really important parts of our education at Cal Poly. Um, yeah, but Quarter Plus really pushed me um, to figure out how a college classroom worked, um, how, what, um, what the differences were between a high school classroom and a college classroom. And um, uh, it taught me how to study and be a really good student. I thought I was a good student in high school. Quarter plus pushed me to the next level. Um, and so I would say that's a huge advantage if you choose to come um, to quarter plus. Um, and it, it prepared me for the quarter system. Quarter system, it is a fast paced uh, deal. Um, and I, I, I knew that, but I didn't really know that um until quarter plus actually showed that for me before college uh before fall quarter actually started um so yeah eight units in four weeks it's fast but it made fall quarter so much more easy um i'm telling you so um some of the great activities i got to do as a quarter plus student um i got to go kayaking i got to go hiking and familiarize myself with san luis obispo which is by far the best place for um that you guys um, are going to be a part of. Can't wait for you guys to join us. Um, yeah, wishing I wasn't slow now, I'm at home, but um, I, I'm sure my other learning assistants can tell you more about um, their experience and I, I cannot express um, to you enough um, how much this program actually offers to students. So um, I'd really like to pass it over, uh, pass the uh, proverbial mic over to um, my friend Liam um, Liam is an awesome other lead learning assistant, um, and I can't wait um, to hear what questions you guys have about the program. We have, we're happy to answer them. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Liam. I was a LA last year, and I was enrolled in the program two years ago. I really enjoyed it. Um, coming my first year, I really appreciated all the support from the faculty and learning assistants. I think it really helped with you get through the program because it's really intense, but with all the support and the activities and stuff, you get to meet people and yeah. Um, I found myself working with my peers to more mutually support each other and that was probably one of the highlights of my quarter plus experience 
Um, some of my favorite memories from Quarter Plus are of meeting meals together with new friends, getting to know them, and while at the same time learning these awesome courses, like I was in music appreciation and it was great and I got units ahead and got to take public speaking, which I th really appreciated because that was a bit daunting for me. So I really appreciated the extra support. Um, my favorite activities during quarter plus were some of the hikes. Um, I went on a couple hikes in the Poly Canyon and it's just beautiful back there and we went to the beach and last year while I was in LA we did a ghost tour of San Luis Obispo and we learned a bunch of cool stuff about like the history of slow San Luis Obispo and that was just awesome. Um, yeah. Okay, I'll go ahead and take yeah, over. Sorry. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Ali. I'm a third year biology major. Um, I was a student in quarter plus my freshman year, and I was also a learning assistant this past year. Um, what really appealed to me about quarter plus was getting to come to Cal Poly four weeks before everyone else and really get used to campus and accustomed to everything because honestly, one of my biggest fears was being completely lost on the first day of school and not knowing where to go. So Quarter Plus really helped like us get used to campus and um, know where to go and just feel so much more comfortable walking around. Um, it also, I found some of my best friends from the program. My roommate during Quarter Plus, I've been friends with her these past four years and we've also been roommates the past two years. So she was literally my first friend I ever met in college and we've been friends since. So it's really an awesome program and you make connections that will last throughout college. Um, all of the lead learning assistants here um, were learning assistants last year. So I've gotten to like make connections with them. And if we see each other on campus, we always stop and say hi. So it's a really great way to build community and just branch out and meet new people. So um, I'll go ahead and pass it over to Corey. Uh, hi, my name is Corey. Uh, I'm a third year biomedical engineering major. And uh, honestly, I would consider my decision to become a uh, part of quarter plus my freshman year was probably one of the best decisions I've made in college. Uh, because before I went up to college, I actually didn't know anyone at all in San Luis Obispo. So I was really nervous about the whole transition and just not knowing anyone, maybe being a nobody, feeling really alone. Uh, especially leaving the familiarity of my my home and my friends down, down here. But uh, through Quarter Plus, uh, I was able to get a sense of community. And it really made me feel connected to, to campus and just friends on campus. And like Ali was saying, like to this day, I still talk to many of the friends that I made on the first day of Quarter Plus. Uh, I, I really do believe in the uh, importance and effectiveness of this program uh, for helping incoming freshmen with this transition. Uh, it, it's a big transition for sure, but Quarter Plus does a good job of making it easier. And I think that's largely due to learning assistance. Uh, my learning assistance had a big impact on me. The, the whole goal of a learning assistant is to kind of act as a mentor to the students and uh, help them pass these like difficult college classes and just get adjusted to the whole life and slow and on your own. Uh, and us learning assistants will attend classes with the students and help them develop like the study skills that they need. And honestly, we just really care about the students. And for me as a freshman, I remember having someone that I could talk to that remembered the transition to college, but was able to get through it. That's a big deal. Uh, and I can speak for all of our learning assistants when I say that we're passionate about helping and mentoring new students. Uh, and I remember like, as a result of my involvement in Quarter Plus, uh, I felt like I had an advantage over the other freshmen because the Quarter Plus program is ridiculously fast paced. So when I got to the normal quarter system, I would look around and a lot of students around me were kind of uh, struggling, but uh, 
not me. Like I had an abundance of extra time uh, because I was just so used to like having to be really on top of things from quarter plus. Uh, I also got introduced to line dancing, which I still do to this day, and a lot of other cool like hikes around slow. Uh, quarter plus was such a positive experience for me as a student that I decided to come back as a learning student last year and this year as well. Uh, so yeah, that's I, I really do believe in this program. Uh, I'm going to pass the mic to Madison. Hi guys, um, I'm Madison. I'm a double major in chemistry and theater. Um, Quarter Plus was definitely the best decision that I made um, as well when I went to Cal Poly. Um, it really helped me uh, meet people and feel comfortable when I started fall quarter. Um, having the learning assistants there, just like even sitting with you in study sessions. Um, we have study sessions for you twice a week for your classes, so you'll get some extra help there and support from your LAs and peers. And it's it was just really nice to even sit there and have them be like, look at me and say, hey, like, you're doing great. Like that was one of the most important and helpful things that made me feel like I was going to be successful in the rest of my time at Cal Poly and having my um, learning assistants be there to encourage me. And it was amazing. And um, when I entered the uh, week welcome during WOW, I just remember walking around and knowing a bunch of people in all different WOW groups and saying hi to everyone I saw. And my WOW leaders looked at me and they were like, how do you know so many people? Like I'm a junior and I don't know that many people walking around. And I think that's one of the biggest advantages of Quarter Plus is um, you definitely make a community and know people all around campus that you see. And um, it makes when there's all the under, um, undergrads getting back to campus for the regular school year um, much more comfortable when you can see familiar faces. Thank you so much, all of the wonderful lead LAs. So Ali, Katie, Corey, Liam, and Madison, they're considered our lead learning assistants. So uh, we also have a whole other group of learning assistants that will be working with them um, and will be attending classes with all the quarter plus students. And as, as Madison and others were saying, uh, um, mentoring and guiding and hosting study sessions. Um, and so is there anything else anybody else, any of the other, any of the leads want to share um, before we move on to some questions that we've already received? Any, anything else or Dr. Alanis, do you have anything else to share? Okay, fantastic. I think we can um, move on to some questions that we have received um, over the past few weeks through our quarter plus email. And I'll read the question and then I'll uh, toss it to, to someone to take. So why is it worth it for me to be part of quarter plus? So would one of the um, lead LAs like to, oh, go for it. Well, I, uh, I'll point to the, the first slide that we provided. And then also we have some great uh, responses here as well. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Um, we have some uh, bullet points here, but I also would really love to hear from at least one of the lead LAs to kind of hear in your own voice, like why you think it was it's worth it to be part of Quarter Plus. So anyone, uh, any one of our lead learning assistants, please jump in here. Um, I'd be happy to. Um, yeah, so um, Quarter Plus, um, it was 100% worth it because um, knowing at, like Ali said, um, campus before um, a lot of other students um, was in, uh, an incredible opportunity. Um, knowing the layout, knowing some people, knowing a, a community of folks that you can reach out to, say even in the fall. Like I, I uh, was a part of Quarter Plus and um, several of the same people were, that were in my Quarter Plus classes ended up being in some of my GEs in the fall. So it's just really nice to know uh, faces and know people and you know, know more about them and learn more about yourself kind of through this program. Um, you just get um, a, a step ahead. As I said, that was my re reason for joining the program. Um, and it was, it was incredible uh, the way things worked out. Um, yeah, fall was a breeze. So I think um, one, you know, you have an advantage academically, you're prepared. And two, you have an academic, you have a, sorry, you have a, an advantage socially um, with a, knowing a lot of people and um, just really becoming a better college student. 
So that's that's my take on that. Anyone else? Great, thank you, Katie. Before we move on to the next slide, um, we have another question that came in um, in the chat and I wanted to just raise it so that one of our leads can take it. Um, what should you bring for your dorm in Quarter Plus? Do you bring everything for your college experience or, or are your parents supposed to bring stuff down after the program is over? So can one of our leads um, uh, take that question and what about what you've done when, when you were a Quarter Plus student? can answer this question. Um, when I lived in quarter, um, in quarter Plus, I brought almost all of my stuff for the year. Um, I left some stuff that I wouldn't need until after a break when I went home, because um, that really wasn't necessary and I didn't want to have to move it twice, but I definitely brought a lot of my stuff up. Um, my roommate, however, brought just the basics that she needed and her parents came back and brought the rest of her stuff that she had packed at home already. So. Either way works. Um, I'd say the essentials definitely you need um, desk lamp, backpack, anything you're going to need for classes, make sure you have all your schoolwork. And um, you don't really need to bring everything if you don't want to, but it's definitely um, an option and it, you'll have people to help you move if uh, that's a concern. Thanks, Madison. Yeah, I should. I also wanted to add that for any housing questions, visit the Cal Poly housing website because they have detailed information about what you should bring um, to Cal Poly. So that's always a good resource. Okay, I think we can move on to the next slide, please, for the next question. This must be a very intense program. What time of time commitment is required? I can speak a little bit to this and then maybe um, one of the uh, learning assistants can also jump in. Um, it is, as, as all of them have said, it is very intense academically, uh, but it's worth it. Um, we like to say you've accepted the challenge. So you will have six hours in class time every day, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. So four days a week, you'll have a class for six hours, plus there'll be optional study sessions on Mon Monday and Wednesday evenings. The study sessions are optional, but we highly encourage them as the learning assistants have mentioned, they're really helpful. Um, so if you can get through quarter plus, your first quarter will be a breeze. I heard that, I've heard that over and over again from everybody from Katie to other uh, learning assistants um, in our program. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and we have these amazing learning assistants again, it's such a unique part of our program we have learning assistants to help guide you. They're really your mentor throughout the entire process. They're taking the classes with you and they're there to help you succeed. And um, I can turn it over to one of the other learning assistants, maybe Corey, maybe you can speak to the, the commitment involved. Sure, uh, yeah, uh, quarter plus. I mean, it's definitely an intense uh, program, uh, but it does, it really does prepare you for the, the regular year. And I think that's a big, value for it. Uh, comparatively, the fall quarter seemed very easy. And it really helps you get very good at time management. And I mean, plus, like, it's just kind of a bonding experience. It brings you closer to the people in your classes, uh, kind of forces you to join, like, make study groups or like go to study sessions where you can have like direct mentors and uh, people that are taking the class with you. Uh, well, so we've already passed the classes, but we'll be going through with you like actually attending lecture and then preparing material to like help supplement that and help students study in order to do better in the class. Uh, and I think that's very helpful and something that is not really present during the regular year. So like it, it's a very good way to transition uh, and get build those skills that the learning assistants can like show you. But there you'll also have time to have fun for sure. Like we have uh, the learning assistants will have activities for students to do uh, on the weekends. And I mean, even like within, like with your, with like your roommates and stuff, you can go have fun. I mean, so is a really nice area. So, you know, me and my roommates would often like go hiking or go down the rec together, just go downtown and have fun. So you, you will definitely, uh, there's a high workload, but you can also have a lot of fun with it. Great. There's another question that's come in that's kind of connected to this question, and I'm, I'm going to put it out to the group. Um, is help available uh, outside of class? So even beyond the study sessions, 
is help available and how much homework uh, would you say there is for each class and is there help uh, available for that? So I'll, I'll leave that open. Um, maybe Ali, you wanna take that? Yeah, sure, I can speak to that. Um, so as Eileen mentioned, there are study sessions for each of the classes. So we usually host two per week for each of the classes. Um, and those are led by learning assistants who are also um, in the class with you. Um, so they're definitely a great resource. Um, and also just as learning assistants, we're always here to help you. So you don't always have to ask us questions in the study sessions. We are always here for help. We want to make sure you succeed. Um, and that's really our main goal and our job in this program. Um, but you also have your professors. Um, office hours are a great, great way to get help. Um, I know they can seem kind of scary at first. I was definitely a little nervous to go to my first office hour, but professors always want to talk to you and help you. So they're also definitely a great resource. Um, and about the homework, I'd say it's definitely, it's still a normal four unit class, just like any other class you'd take um, during a regular 10 unit or 10 week quarter. So there is gonna be a similar homework load to a normal quarter, uh, but I definitely think it's doable with all the resources that Quarter Plus provides. Um, and like I said, like learning assistants, the program staff, professors, everyone is here to make sure that you succeed. That's great. And um, Dr. Alanis, would you like to speak to that too, since you're one of the Quarter Plus professors? Yes, well, of course, our whole goal is to grind you into the, no, I'm totally kidding. Um, uh, really, we see this as an opportunity uh, to do more experiential, more um, le potentially less lecture and less reading and more like, let's get out into the community. Let's, let's adventure out and see, for me in sociology, let's see how society is actually working because we have more time to do so. Um, I, I do, and I think most faculty do actually prescribe less reading because the reading although important, it, it, it ends up being a little bit less important than if you can actually experience it, than if we can actually have good, solid discussions about it. Um, so the workload is a lot because it's a shorter period of time, but we recognize that it's a shorter period of time. We recognize the whole, uh, the whole experience is, is different, and so we're uh, sympathetic to that. Um, and you know, as a faculty member, one of the things I love most is to talk about sociology. So I love it when students come in with questions or, or if they see something on the news that they want to talk about. And I'm not here to, um, to give them my opinion. I'm here to ask questions and for us to wrestle with these questions together. Uh, I find that a lot of fun. So when you talk to a faculty member about the class, they're teaching that class because they love it. And so they really do want to talk about it and they do want you to do well which is a good hint. If you want a little bit of extra uh, benefit in the class, uh, potentially points or whatever, it's always good to go to office hours because then the professor knows that you're trying, that you're engaged, that you care. And so they're gonna remember that when, they, when the final grades come around. That's, that's our secret though, okay? So don't, don't let any of the other faculty know that I told you that. That's great. Thank you for sharing your insight especially since you've been part of Quarter Plus for so many years now. Okay, I think we can move on to the next slide. Do parents have to come back and help move their daughter or son into their fall housing assignment? I can uh, maybe answer that, and, and if anybody else wants to jump in to talk about their experience, I think that would be great. The answer to it is that no, um, your parents do not need to come back and move you in. You are given a day, Friday, September 4th, that's dedicated to you moving out of your quarter plus housing into your fall assignment. So housing will help, they'll provide bins, um, the learning assistants will be around to help, but it'll be up to you to pack up your personal items and um, get yourself over to your um, fall housing assignment. So maybe one of our um, learning assistants um, wants to speak to that, um, who hasn't spoken maybe in a while, maybe Madison, Speak to that or Liam um yeah I know I know a, it's about half and half people who come back and don't um I would say that 
there are definitely some students who would rather their parents not come come back because it is before finals and um, in the class so they don't have time to spend the weekend with your family necessarily if you want to study but um, a lot of students also can have their parents come up and they stay and help them and they have time to go to dinner or do some activities with their parents um, but yeah it's just kind of a, a personal preference either either way is a uh, works and um, if you need help moving there's different people there to help you. Anybody else want to jump in and add to that? Any of the other learning assistants? No, I should also add that um, there are no classes this year on move day so you don't have to worry about the stress of going to class and then having to pack up and move your stuff so we're hoping that that will help relieve some of the stress around moving. I think we can go to the next slide. Okay, do, do students select the classes or are only specific courses offered? So um, in the Quarter Plus program is unique in that the staff selects the classes and the instructors. We work very closely with faculty to find classes that fit into the unique situation that is quarter plus. And we take into consideration all aspects of the student's um, application, such as their AP and IB credits, uh, the degree requirements for their particular major, and any previous college courses um, that they've taken. So we kind of combine all of that, and that's how we place them in their general ed class. Um, there is, everybody who is in quarter plus does have to take the public speaking comms 101. So everyone will take a comms 101 and then a general education class. Um, and I'll open it up to maybe one of the uh, lead learning assistants to just speak about your experience. Um, either you could talk about comms and or the general ed class that you took just to share any insight you have. Okay, I'll tell someone to speak. Liam, we haven't heard from you in a while. Can you speak to the yeah, um, so all of the, pretty much all of the general ed classes that are offered are very interesting. When I did it, I got enrolled in music appreciation, which was really interesting. We went over like, what's, how to analyze different types of music from like the middle ages to almost modern day. Um, yeah, so stuff like Bach, um, Schoenberg, Schubert, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, and yeah, I don't know what else to say. No, that's great. Just wanted to get someone's insight who'd been through it. Um, another quick live question that's come in that I wanted to address before we go to the next slide uh, is when will we know if Quarter Plus is virtual? And the answer is hopefully within the next couple of weeks, like uh, Brian said at the beginning, we don't have that answer for you right now. But as soon as we do know if there's going to be a change, we will update the website immediately. Um, so as soon as we have any news about that, we will put it up on our website. Thank you for that question. And I think there's, is there one more slide of questions? Oh, okay, I think I answered this, but I can just review it real quickly. Do students take mostly GE, meaning general education classes? So Quarter Plus is designed to give the new students a head start on their lower division general ed courses. So as I said, each student takes comms 101, the public speaking course, and then the other class they take is another lower division general ed course, uh, like music appreciation that Liam mentions, mentioned. There's others, journalism, sociology. So there's there's several general education courses that we place the students in. Uh, I think, was there another question slide? Not sure. Oh, okay, something about housing. Do students stay in Yaki Tutu? And the answer is yes. Students, all quarter plus students will stay in one of the Yaki Tutu residence halls. All right, any other question slides to queue up? Okay, I think that was it for the question slides. Um, I'm just gonna review some important dates um, and then I think we can wrap it up. Uh, so April 27th, the first acceptance emails will be sent out. May 1st is the deadline to apply for the quarter plus scholarship. 
May 4th through 8th is when scholarship recipients will be notified. Uh, May 11th through 15th, program waivers will be sent to the applicants via Adobe Sign. And May 15th is the date that your program deposit and program waivers are due to us. Next slide is August 13th is the move-in day and your welcome reception. August 14th, a Friday, is your first day of classes. And September 4th is the move out a day that we were talking about where you move from your quarter plus residence hall into your full housing assignment. And September 11th is the day of finals and the last day of the program. And please feel free to contact us with um, any more questions that we have, if we have been able to, unable to answer your questions, please email us at quarterplus at calpoly.edu and we will get back to you as soon as we can. We check that um, throughout the day. So we're happy to answer your questions that way. That's a great way to contact us. And stay updated by going to the uh, Quarter Plus website. So quarterplus.calpoly.edu and stay connected also through our social media channels, uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, I think um, we, we're gonna wrap it up. Great job to all of our panelists. Thank you so much. Katie and Ali, Corey, Liam, Madison, Dr. Orion Alanis, uh, Brian TG, our provost. Thank you um, so much. And I'm gonna turn it over to Brian to say something. Great. Well, we really appreciate all of the questions that came in on the Q&A. We've done our best to stay uh, current with all of them. Uh, if there are any uh, questions that we haven't been able to address, uh, please don't hesitate to send us the question uh, through, the, through the email address, and uh, we'll, we want to address all of them. Uh, I did see some questions about summer classes. Uh, there's a distinction here between the, the regular summer classes that Cal Poly is offering and, and this summer we are offering those virtually and then the distinctive quarter plus program. And, and I just wanted to clarify that uh, I did provide an answer in the Q&A that uh, Cal Poly, we are developing plans uh, for uh, the summer classes outside of quarter plus uh, for incoming students. We have uh, some more deliberations to go through as a campus about those issues. And uh, what I wanted to differentiate is how Quarter Plus is a cohort program that's designed intentionally for incoming first time freshmen. And it provides a great deal of services and support and activities that wrap around the program to support students uh, who are first transitioning into college. Also, you'll note that the calendar timing of it starting in mid August is different than the regular summer courses at Cal Poly. So in general, we encourage first-time freshmen who do want to take classes before the PLUS program. Uh, we are, however, developing plans uh, possibly to allow first-time freshmen to take regular summer term classes, and that plan is still emerging. Uh, there's some details we need to work out on that. And so I have uh, offered the additional website, which is simply summer.calpoly.edu. And so uh, we'll have more information about it. I hope you can appreciate and understand that we are dealing with a, a rapidly evolving situation uh, in terms of plans, both in terms of uh, the residential and the virtual elements. And, uh, and so we are doing our very best to stay as updated as we can on the website. So we encourage you to continue to consult the Quarter Plus website and the Summer website. And uh, we'll do our very best to keep those websites updated with the most current information. And of course, we're always here to answer the questions you might have. Um, we're very grateful for, to everyone who's taken time out of their schedule today to join us on this. Uh, we recognize you've spent a lot of time on Zoom and webinars and, and others, and we, uh, we recognize that it's a, a gift you've given us uh, to us to spend this time with us. So I wanna thank uh, my whole team here in extended education, uh, especially the students and the, and the faculty, uh, Dr. Alanis, for spending time uh, I know that's who you most wanted to hear from, and so I'm really grateful for that. So thank you again so much, and um, we appreciate you joining us for this, and I believe that uh, 